Hi guys, so in this video we will be explaining to you the various phases that form part of the DevOps life cycle. The DevOps life cycle is pretty much the heart of everything concerning DevOps. There are principally seven main phases in the DevOps life cycle. These are plan, coding, building, testing, deployment, operations and monitoring. <laughs> we just fed you a cracker. Here's Neeraj Kheria to give you the full platter on the scene. So that we can have a quick understanding of the coding phase as well. So let's say when we are working with a global team, let's move to the annotation. Now, let's say when we are working with a global team, I'm not sure who is having the annotation itself. So I'm not sure who is having the annotation itself. So if we can stop writing high, then we can concentrate on discussion on the, on the DevOps itself. Thank you so much. If we can erase this up as well. Perfect. Thank you. So if we have a global team, let's suppose if we have a global, global team of developers, one team is sitting in Seattle, the other, sitting, the other team is sitting in Johannesburg, the other team is sitting in Tokyo, and we have other teams sitting in Sydney. So let's say we have a global team which is working on a single project. And each and every team members, they are working on different components. For example, let's say we have a team for Seattle. Seattle team is working on the header section for the, or you can say for the dashboard. Johannesburg team is working on the entire data component of the same project. Sydney team is working on implementation of the ad tech system on the same platform. And the team for Tokyo is working on the front end. That means working on the entire we can say the front end and also on the back end for the entire application itself. And they all have different works divided, work divided. And then that means if we have a project manager whose sole responsibility is to make sure it fetches the code from each and every team members, what they, what they are working on and to maintain a copy of each and every changes being submitted by these team members. For example, there has been 10 different changes from Tokyo and 15 changes from Sydney, 20 changes from Johannesburg team and again 10 changes from Seattle team on a daily basis. So I'm sure you all must be loving the, the session here guys, but again, thank you so much for giving the hearts, but I guess we can focus on the session without these hearts and stars. So for example, no, this gets a good animation to the upside as well. Thank you for doing that. So if we have multiple team members working on the same project, then we have to have a centralized system because if the project manager does not have a centralized place to store the code, to store the code being submitted by each and every developers, if the browser does not have any kind of version control system to keep a chain, to keep a track of all the changes happening, then that will create a real, we can say that will create a good problem for the project manager and also for the entire project as well. Correct. And that's why we need to have a source code management defined. And then we have the build phase. So using build phase, now once the code has been made available, obviously we have to create a build out of it. When we say creating a build out of it, we simply mean, let's say we have a code for Java. Uh, Java application code has been, has been deployed on the same coding phase. And then for using that code, obviously we have to create a build out of it. And for building purpose, we have tools like we have Mavens, Apache Ant, and Gradle. So these are the most popular tools which are used for building the code. And now when you say building a code, then, then simply we simply mean that building a code simply makes sure that we are, we are taking care of the compilation, code review, running the unit test. That means to validate the entire code structure is completely functional without having any kind of issues. And once the entire build has been created, then we have the next, the next phase is test phase. So test phase is basically like a testing tool available through which we can define multiple scripts and we can let those scripts complete the test for us. Let's say we are developing any web-based application. And now we want to test out if that component, for example, if that particular web page is each and every component in that web page is working or not. Then we can use tools like we have Selenium, JUnit. So these are one of the most popular testing tools available in DevOps. So that we can use these tools to, to check if the components are working 
as they should or not. So that is the same test report can be sent back to developers to allow them to make the changes in case there has been any bugs. Then we have at the core, we have integration. So integration is basically, now this is also called as continuous. Now each and every phase, these are continuous. That means the main core of DevOps is to make sure every process has been made continuous. That means there is no, there's minimum human involvement in the entire process so that we can let the code being pushed in the code in the uh, in the github repository and once the code is available it can we can create an automatic build out of it we can create we can create multiple tests we can create multiple testing scripts and make it and make it available so that as soon as the build is created that those testing scripts can be attached to that build and then they can be pushed by pushed to any deployment servers that we have and integrations that we for integration we have tools like we have Hudson, Bamboo, Jenkins, where Jenkins is the most popular tool available for a continuous integration. So when we say integration, here we can define the entire pipeline. Let's say when we take pipeline, let's understand what exactly pipeline is. Now in DevOps, we can define the entire pipeline. When we say pipeline, we simply mean pipeline is a set of sequential steps that we have to take care of. For example, in the first step, we can define we are going to go for the source code tool. Or for example, for example, let's say we have a source code management tool. Now we want that as soon as a code is available in any of the source code management sources. For example, we are using GitHub. So if for developers they are continuously pushing the code in source code management. So for example, we have developers A, B, and C, and a new code has been pushed from A. So as soon as a new code is available in a source code management, we want that a build out of it should be created using any tool that we have defined, using Maven, Gradle, Apache, and any tool. And then if we already have a testing script defined, then that particular testing script should also be attached to that particular build that has been created, correct? And then we want that again, based on if you want to run multiple tests here, or if you want to deploy them on production staging environment, then we can automatically send that code to the servers as well. So that each and every step can be fully automated. So we don't have to manually create a build. We don't have to manually attach a testing script and then deploy on, on the server. We can let these process be executed in a given sequence. And this exactly is called as a pipeline. This is actually called as a pipeline that we can create on top of continuous integration tools. And that's why we have tools like we have Jenkins. All right. So are we clear on the, on the concept of pipeline till this point? Please give me a quick information, everyone. Are we all clear on the concept of pipeline? What pipeline is? And now annotations are off guys. So you can try giving me a confirmation using the same questions, the same chat window. So, can, so that I can be, I can be confirmed that you, it is clear for everyone. And guys, in case you have any questions, you want the topic to be more verified, you can simply ask and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Perfect. Thank you for confirming. Then we have tools that we have now. Then we have tools for deployment, like we have Docker, we have Docker, Valgrind. So when we say deployment, we simply deploy the entire solution on top of containers. So we have multiple containerization tools available, like we have Docker, we have uh, with Docker being the most popular containerization tools available. For example, let's say when you're deploying any, any application there. So again, we either we can create a complete VM as in a virtual image, but VM contains the entire operating system host files. It then, it then contains the entire application files and then the data. So again, that means the entire VM becomes really heavy, ranging from, I suppose, it can be 500 MB, it can be 1 GB till, it can be 1 GB plus size as well. So that means this becomes not feasible to be shared among multiple developers team. 
and that's why we can use the concept of containers so containers they simply package the application and they package all the libraries and bins that is required for running their application itself so that we can make the entire container self we can say autonomous where all the dependencies are already inside the container itself and then we can deploy the containers we can share the containers for the deployment purposes and, the, and for creating these containers we have tools like we have docker and we can if we want to deploy the entire application in a cluster of, of, of docker containers we can easily do that as well the docker is the most popular tool for containerization Let's see, let's just up. Now, after deployment, we have the operation phase. So, operation phase includes the tools like we have Chef, Puppet, Ansible, Solstack. So, these are basically like a monitoring, not monitoring, but configuration management tools available in DevOps lifecycle. So, when we say configuration management tool, let's understand what exactly we mean by that. Let's say we are running a server. We are running a server, and here we want to make a definite change in terms of php here you want to have a specific version of php or specific version of mysql of mysql here we are want to deploy one particular application code that we have created or if we had deployed any application code now we want to roll back then these type of changes we can do easily for a server count of less than 10 if the server count is less than 10 then we can easily open up any number of servers any server and we can do that one by one manually we can do that but if we have more than 10 servers let's say if we have thousand servers available then doing the manual configuration for these thousand servers is practically not possible and let's say somehow we even managed to do that those thousand configurations and after, let's say, after we have updated PHP, we found out that this new version of PHP is hampering the quality of our, app, of our existing application. That means, again, we have to reconfigure those thousand servers that we have configured just now. And again, this is like a nightmare for any particular operations team, correct? And that's why to avoid this kind of situation, we can take the help of tools like we have configuration management systems. So using configuration management tools, what we can do, we can create a complete template where we can define what all configurations we, we need to change on the servers. And then we can use this template to configure these thousand servers automatically. That means if traditionally, if we require, let's say 10 days to configure these thousand servers, then using the template and a tool for configuration management, we can do that within, within an hour itself, whether we can say whether within in minutes. That's what exactly configuration management system is all about. And we have multiple tools for configuration management, like we have Chef, Puppet, Ansible. They all have the same principle, but different structures and different use cases. And that is something that we are going to discuss step by step as we, further, as we continue towards our certification. And at last we have tools for monitoring and for monitoring we have we are going to use tools like we have nagios plunk and uh, so nagios where nagios is the most popular tool for continuous monitoring when we say monitoring that means obviously we have to keep a check on all the servers that we have up and running because if we don't keep a check on the performance and the health status for the servers then we are not going to keep we are not going to maintain the fault tolerance for the entire architecture and this is something that we have to take care of in real time use cases. And then and that's why we, the most popular tool out there is Nagios because it also has a complete dashboard that we can take the help of. We also have multiple other tools as well, available as well. Like we have Prometheus, so we can use Prometheus, we can use Grafana, we can use Plunk, the multiple tools, but the most popular one out there is Nagios. And in DevOps, for each and every phase, there are hundreds of tools available, guys. But it does not mean that we have to be well aware of two, of every tool available in every phases. Even if we know just one tool from every phase, that means in planning, we can, know, we can have the knowledge of, let's suppose, Trello. Then we, for coding, we can have the knowledge of just Git. If in building, we know only Maven. In testing, we know only Selenium. 
and integration. If you know Oli Jenkins in deployment, we know Docker, Chef or Puppet or Ansible. Or, and then we know in monitoring, we can know about, about Nagios. Then we are good to be called as a really good, not just good DevOps engineer, but a really good DevOps engineer. Obviously, having knowledge of multiple tools is, also, is always add-on because we are more open to do the custom changes for the clients because we may, we may never know which particular platform they might be running on. All right. So I hope each and every phase, the overview for each and every phase is clear for everyone. Please give me a quick information, guys. I hope the overview for each and every phase is clear for everyone. So thank you so much for joining guys and have a great day ahead. Take care.